I'm going to get started. Welcome to tonight's show. My name is Alexa. I'm the head of online community for House Call Pro and your host for the home service evening update. I'm joined by my co-host, Roland, co-founder of House Call Pro, and Mel, our senior vice president of people. You can think of us as your in-house business, marketing, and HR strategy experts. Each evening at 5 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Thursday, we share the state of the world according to the home service industry, and we focus on one main topic or guest. So tonight, as we've been talking about, all about reviews. We have a special guest, Wade Brown, here from Podium with us um, to talk about what the heck has been going on with Google. How do I continue to get reviews during the coronavirus and how to do it in the best way possible? Tomorrow's topic, and we'll talk more about that at the end, it's Selling 101 with Brooks, Janelle, and Victor Rancourt. That's going to be an awesome topic as well to end the week. If you're wondering where to watch, watch past episodes, we have a YouTube channel. Just Google, not Google, search House Call Pro, and we have a whole playlist of coronavirus evening update. And it goes all the way back now, six weeks. So definitely go back and watch those if you haven't yet. And make sure you're in the Facebook group. And I'll post the links in here too when Smell starts her evening update. But that is where you can continue to have conversations like this to continue to talk about what we go over each evening. So um, other than that, yeah, there's we now surpass 2,800 people in that group. That is an incredible milestone. So with that being said, before we get into our main topic, as always, Mel is going to start us off with our state of the world. Thank you and good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Melina Fairley, Senior Vice President of People at House Call Pro. Feel free to call me Mel. So we do come to you live from our homes. I'm here in Northern San Diego County, uh, Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific, to give you a daily recap of what's going on in the news related to coronavirus. So just a few short minutes just to bring you up to speed. And then we also bring you information, guests, a famous guest, apparently, Mark Cuban last night, advice, and also just community. So thank you for continuing to join us, those of you who are here um, for your repeat evenings. And if you're the first time, welcome, and we hope you make a habit of it. So I am not a reporter. I just play one here every night. Um, I am a mom of four, a Marine Corps wife. I'm a homeowner. And probably most importantly to this group, I'm a human resources professional. So I've been doing this work for over 20 years and I'm here to answer your questions related to employment and other people issues. So with that said, here's your evening update um, for this beautiful, at least here in San Diego, Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. The Johns Hopkins dashboard is still reporting over two and a half million cases and we're up to over 176,000 deaths globally. Let's see. Oh, and that was as of about a half hour ago. So you can see that those numbers are up over 182,000. So this is updated um, often throughout the day. So good one yep. to- bottom, bottom left right here, you can always tell 422, 4.38 PM. Um, and in the US, we've reached over 820,000 cases. There we are, eight, right now 839 and over 46,000 deaths. So notably, um, today we have shown the highest daily incidence for the United States. There were 39,500 new cases recorded today. So this is the highest daily recording of new cases since the beginning of the pandemic. And based on these recent daily trends, the U.S. is now slated to potentially reach 1 million cases by the end of this month, the end of April, and 50,000 um, deaths by April 25th. Yeah, and I remember correctly, so Dr. Fauci, he had estimated originally between 100 to 200,000 and then uh, restated it to be maybe down to 60,000. So does that, does that sound like we'll be yeah, exactly. doing that projection? I haven't heard an updated projection, but on April 9th, that was revised to 60,000 projected deaths, just projecting through early August. Um, although that was based on the existing lockdowns and the existing social distancing in place at that time. And, and we're starting to see that, that there are some areas who are beginning to open up. So also in good news, New York State, again, reported its lowest daily incidence of new cases since March 20th. This is the sixth consecutive day of declining new cases in New York State, which is really good news. Um, Germany has experienced several consecutive weeks of overall declining new cases, so that's also a promising start. But even as many countries, including our own, begin to loosen some of these social distancing restrictions, the World Health Organization today said that the pandemic is far from over. According to the WHO, complacency is 
quote, the greatest danger facing countries in the fight against coronavirus. So speaking at a press conference today, the general, the director general of the World Health Organization said the virus, quote, remains extremely dangerous and quote, make no mistake, we have a long way to go. This virus will be with us for a long time, end quote. So we'll be continuing to bring you any new um, updates or projections that come our way. And probably the two biggest pieces of information out of the White House and um, the government, the Congress over the last few days is that yesterday the Senate passed an amendment to the Paycheck Protection Program and to the Health Care Enhancement Act. So that will provide further support for small businesses. So this is more money for the PPP, more money for the EIDL from, from the Small Business Administration. And there's also 75 billion for hospitals and 25 billion to expand testing. So those were two brand new additions. Also, we heard um, some yesterday, then it was formally announced today by President Donald Trump that he will direct additional restrictions on immigration in response to the COVID-19 epidemic. So this will suspend immigration for those seeking a green card for a period of what he called a pause of at least 60 days. So we're expected to see exemptions for seasonal workers, those who are critical to agriculture and to the food supply chain. Um, but that was definitely um, some, a big announcement out of the White House today. Alexa? Yeah. Awesome. Um, Mel, and I know we talked about this at the beginning, but again, can you tell us how many people have recovered? Oh, you can click back into the, the dashboard. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to the dash. Let's go to the dash. 77,000. Yeah. yeah, you'll see that on the far right hand side now in, in blue, uh, well, next to the blue. Uh, so those are the tests conducted. They've started to post that and total recovered 77,000. Yep. Awesome. That's yeah, the number. That's the you know the one that and the testing number. Those are the two numbers we want to see continue to climb. Mm -hmm. yep. Good to report on the good news. Thanks, Alexa. Thank you. Yeah, that was a question from MD Snyder. We started incorporating that probably like two or three weeks ago. Christy suggested. I think it's an important number to have in there because everything else is so sad, and at least we know people are recovering. Yeah, it's good to hear too about the slowing, you know, New York having, you know, several days in a row of decreasing daily cases, you know, Germany experiencing um, decreasing cases, even as they begin to loosen restrictions. So they're starting to definitely be um, good sized slivers and even maybe some chunks of good news. So we'll, we'll keep letting you know about, about both sides. We'll keep letting you know the good news too. But a number that we want to continue to see climbing as well is your number of reviews. So this is a perfect transition going into our guest and topic for the day. So Wade, let's have you unmute yourself and start your video. And awesome. There you are. Hey, Wade. Hello. Okay. So right now we're going to go into like an interview with Wade. Um, it's really all about um, reviews. We're going to first talk about Google. Um, and what the heck's been going on there. And Wade's going to be giving advice, his expert advice on review generation. So if you yeah, and, and little... he's not really in the office, guys, just so you yeah. know, it's probably, probably a green screen. I am working from home just like everybody else, I think. So I have some great, uh, some great images from our office though. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's, it's a pleasure to be a part. I've, I've been following the, the nightly updates and I and, uh, think there's a ton of value. So it's a pleasure to, to be able to share with everyone and, and hope you can get some value from what we talked about tonight. I think there is some real relevance uh, in the current situation with COVID to really help you. So just a little bit of background on who Podium is. We have about 40,000 businesses using our platform for reviews and messaging and about 13,000 of those are in home services. Um, I'd say just in general from a review standpoint, um, we've generated over 16 million reviews for businesses or help them generate, I should say. You, you all do the part that, that's the hard part. We just help facilitate that review invitation and, and get that in for you. And about 5 million of those have been in home services. So we, we've, we've helped a lot of businesses and, and really love just the aspect of being able to help you show who you really are. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot going on right now that we'll talk through in the next, in the next few minutes. Uh, my focus is exclusively within the home services space. So I work with pros like, like all of you. And uh, really that's my podium works in, in several different industries, but I focus exclusively in home services and have for the last three years or so with podium. So excited to be on. 
Yeah, no, excited to have you. So one of the things obviously that's really important and the reason why this this topic is is so top of mind for a lot of our pros is because, you know, as funds become a little tighter uh, and marketing budgets decrease, maybe they're spending less on, you know, any kind of PPC or lead buying or those things. Um, the thing that still will always exist is the reviews for the past work that you've done, which is very organic, helps you rank really super high. Um, so the importance of it really now, especially in these times is, is more now than ever. Um, because because once you earn that review, you know, it compounds. It's very similar to um, the way that, you know, you should be saving up um, so that money can compound and compound. And likewise, the same for your reviews. And so when we think about what's the best thing our pros can be focusing on and something that doesn't cost you any money, just costs you some effort, we're going to probably share some more of those tips and those things here because those are things you can directly affect even right now in times like these uh, that'll give you the best bang for your buck because it's not going to cost you anything. So um, that being said, I know there's um, the question as Alexa's heard a million times over um, in a lot of our groups, the coronavirus group and the house called pros group, um, wherever we look at this question keeps Every, popping up. So what yeah. is the question? So this is a thing that is on everyone's mind right now when it comes to reviews. What is going on with Google? Why is it happening? What can I do about it? Bring us up to speed, Wade. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to give some context too, I think, you know, Podium has a fairly unique relationship with Google and we work pretty closely with their reviews team. We meet with them frequently. They're actually based in Japan is where their, their core reviews team is. And we go out there and meet with them very, very regularly. So we feel like we're pretty tight uh, in the loop with Google. And, and so we've had some, some interesting conversations with them during the COVID crisis. I think, I think a few things happened, right? I mean, first of all, Google had all employees go remote, just like most businesses they had to send everybody home. People are working from home. So that's obviously going to interrupt some, some normal workflows and, and, and what's happening. And, and part of that, too, is that then they, they started re, call it reprioritizing some of their staff uh, and their staffing resources for COVID-specific initiatives. So there's a lot, just like a lot of businesses, they're, they're focusing on some certain ways to either help or, or sustain their own business as it relates to COVID. So what that meant is that they took some of the resources that were allocated to that reviews team. And just for, for clarification, one thing that Google does is they review reviews before they post them out. So they don't just let everyone go out there. They try to be pretty on top of reviewing reviews. Obviously, they don't probably read every word of every review, but they try to have some review process. And, and so as they've allocated some of these resources to other places, they've actually not been able to keep up with the, the new reviews coming in. And therefore, they didn't feel comfortable having all those get posted publicly. And, and in their own words, one of the reasons they wanted to be careful and not just throw everything out there when they couldn't review it is because there's a lot of pros like you that are working extremely hard and still trying to provide the best possible service. But at this point, there are circumstances beyond your control. And in that case, it's really difficult to make every customer happy. And, and so they don't want negative reviews being posted that are, are purely attributable to COVID circumstances. Where, where it's something beyond your control, you know, appointments get interrupted, things happen, you're not able to, to have the same turnaround, your supply chain is, is interrupted, those types of things are gonna happen right now. And they don't want customers posting negative reviews that negatively impact your business based on things that you have no control over. So that, that's really, you know, at least from, from what we've been able to determine with Google and our conversations and what we've seen talking to customers and everyone else, that's what we've been able to determine. I think it really was in, in a, a sincere, effort to, to one, work on projects that are COVID related and two, to try to protect uh, businesses as they weren't able to go through their normal review process. And I, and I would just say that they, what, what they limited was posting new reviews as well as new review replies. So if you were going in there uh, to your Google My Business account and trying to re respond to reviews that were coming in, you weren't able to do that as well. And, and so, you know, that the key though is that Google is still actually collecting reviews. All the reviews that have been left over the last, you know, six weeks or eight weeks, whatever it's been, they are still uh, collecting those. And actually just in the last week or two, we've actually seen some of those reviews start to populate. And so in our most recent conversations with Google, they have confirmed that number one, they are publishing reviews again, and, and they've started to allocate those resources so that they can still scale and meet those needs. And they'll continue to re-enable uh, the publishing of new reviews. Additionally, they've also told us that they will be posting the reviews that have been collected during COVID. And so those have been paused over the last six weeks. Those will start to show up in your account. It's, it's being done in, in uh, just, I don't know if there's regions that they're focusing on, but we do see across 
of our platform and the 40 plus thousand businesses that we work with that they're starting to populate back in there and show those dates. And then you as a pro can go back in there and start responding to those reviews as well. So the, the, the bad news is that you haven't seen those for the last six weeks. The good news is they're not lost. If you've been making efforts, those reviews should still be coming through. Uh, they're just delayed. And, and last but not least is that has started, the, those, those gates have started to open up again, those floodgates. So you should start to see those coming through. If you haven't already, it should be in the next few weeks. Yeah, and um, for what it's worth, obviously there's a way to reply to reviews. Those, like Wade said, um, were put on hold for, for quite a bit. Um, they're actually live now, so you can actually start replying to some of the reviews, even your past reviews. Um, I feel like, you know, when you've got a little extra time on your hands, it's really important to reply to all of your reviews that you get. If someone took the time to leave you a review, um, take the time and, and thank them, you know, or compliment them on something that they said in it. Um, or if it happens to be a bad review, obviously, you know, um, make people believe that you as the company would do the right thing to make the situation right. You know, it's the best thing to do with these kind of these negative reviews. And yeah, actually, I think it's, uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we have a resource for you on that note, um, because you do have more time now to go back and respond to these customer reviews. Um, I don't know if there's a rule weight on like how far back you should be able to go, but we have a really comprehensive guide about how to respond to negative hope negative reviews in the home service space. So we'll post that there at the end. There's a whole guide um, filled with examples of other pros that we've gathered from the Facebook group. So we'll post that in there. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that responding to reviews is super crucial and especially during times like this where it's new for everybody, it's chaotic. And what customers want is they wanna build that confidence before they interact with you, even more so now than before. And we'll talk more about this, but. The replying to reviews is it just helps build that confidence, especially if a negative review does come in. Like Roland said, you can go in there, you can respond to them in a positive way to show them that you're a business that actually cares about what their customers think, and you're not just there to make a dollar. And and again, where that confidence now is is as important as ever, uh, that that's really crucial. So take the time, respond to those reviews, especially the negative ones, but the positive ones as well, and it just helps build consumer confidence. Yeah, um, obviously coronavirus has slowed down the total amount of jobs. Um, we've published um, a trades health index uh, where we show both like the, the leading and the trailing indicators of jobs, um, you know, actually booked and then jobs completed or jobs scheduled and jobs completed. So we've seen that slow down and, and that's a really big indicator of the amount of jobs that you're doing. And obviously uh, once you, let's say have a have hundred jobs, there's a certain percentage of those that typically leave you a review. Um, but Wade, have you seen any trends or anything like during coronavirus? Is there an increase in people willing to leave reviews? Is there a decrease? Um, obviously there is just because of the overall job volume is down, but maybe on a percentage basis, do you feel like people are more uh, willing to leave reviews now more than ever before or, um, or not? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, I think there's two sides of it. Like, like you said, there's, there's almost like less at bats, <laughs> right? You're not getting as many jobs. There's less customers to leave you new reviews. And so um, because, because of the, you know, coronavirus and everything else, you, you have to step up your game and win those jobs. And when you win those jobs, if you're putting in that extra level of effort, uh, that's just coming with what you're doing right now, typically you're going to get a higher conversion rate. So it's been a little bit hard to track because with Google not posting those reviews, um, you know, obviously we're not able to see one of the main inputs of, of what we can see our conversion percentage based off. But, you know, Potem, we work also with Facebook and HomeAdvisor and all the other main review sites out there. And so when we look at it site by site, we have seen actually a slight increase in conversion rate where, um, you know, each business has their own, their own, method to, to get reviews. And so I wouldn't say that it's a, it's, it's a easy number to get to. Um, but in general, most businesses have seen a slight increase in that conversion percentage, just because they're taking that extra touch, that extra level of service. Yeah. And, and they're giving that to them. And, and as they're interacting with their customers, then the customers feel more grateful and they're more willing to go to a positive review. Sorry. We know that negative reviews um, I think people are like, I think it's like 11 times more likely to go leave you a negative review yeah. just organically because they, they, when they get upset, they want to burn the world down. We've seen it a million times. We've probably been there ourselves and, and we just get frustrated and we want to tell someone about it. Um, that's not the case with positive reviews, unfortunately, but I think in extreme circumstances like COVID, it does move more people to think about that. Plus they have more time on their hands. They're, they're stuck at home and, and they're able to think more about their experience. And so um, you know, we'll talk more about maybe how to, how to get some of those reviews and how to, how to leverage your relationships to get some of those reviews. But yeah, there has been a slight uptick in, in, in that conversion rate. 
-hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's good news. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before we get into the how, like you're talking about, can you just explain right now, why are reviews as important as ever right now? Why should our pros watching still be caring about this? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you have to worry about right now. <laughs> and, and, uh, you, you're trying to figure out how to get your, you know, keep people employed or, or make payroll and do these different things. You're obviously worrying about the loans you need to get and the paperwork. So many things to worry about. Why even worry about reviews? when it seems so ancillary? Well, I think, I think the answer, Alexa, really comes down to think about yourself in a consumer shoes right now. What do you want to do? What, what, what has your state put in, in order as far as a stay at home mandate or, or whatever else is going on? Do people want to be interacting? Do they want to be having someone come over to their home and, and either coming into their home or doing something in their yard or in their, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it takes more confidence right now for me as a consumer to want to invite someone over and I need to understand who this business is. And so I've actually had a few experiences. I've, I've hired some contractors during the COVID uh, crisis and, and I've actually done more research myself as I've done that because I want to understand, Hey, how are they addressing the COVID situation? Are they going to come shake my hand or they're going to come in a mask and gloves and be respectful of social distancing and just understanding that. Cause I'm concerned. I have a family that has some, some medical needs and I want to make sure that they're protected. And so how do I do that? And uh, certainly there's other ways you can put messages on your website. You can, when they communicate with you, you can let them know first and foremost, Hey, whether it's a web chat or a phone call, whatever it is, you can say, Hey, just so you know, here's what we're doing to protect you during COVID but you can, they can also see that through reviews. And again, maybe not on Google because those haven't been posting, but Facebook and other places, consumers want to still go get that content. And so as much as you can drive your, your customers that are happy and have had a good experience with you, particularly during the COVID situation, to go leave your review and, and, and tell them, say, hey, would you leave us a review? And during, you know, it, would you mind talking about your experience with us during COVID? And, and have them actually talk about their experience specifically. It's just going to build confidence and help you get more jobs and build that consumer confidence during, during this crazy time. Mm -hmm. um, I think also from the consumer side, I've, during, during COVID, I've set aside time and I, I've always had this, you're, you're totally right, Wait about like when something bad happens, you have a bad experience, you're the first one to go on there and write a bad review. But I've, I've noticed this about myself and I'm sure other consumers, I just keep this internal list of all these businesses I've had an awesome experience at. And so what I did was I wrote them down and then I spent some time going and reviewing them on all different platforms. And I know that a lot of other homeowners, a lot of consumers, they're all in the same mindset too. So like you're in the right time to be asking people for reviews. They want to support local. Yep. So, so that, I mean, you teed up my question, which is, you know, what are the three top ways that our audience can continue to get these reviews to come in, even when, you know, the, the job counts are down. So what are some things that um, you'd advise them to make sure to do after every single job? Yeah, this is, this is really crucial. I think, Again, it's, it's exponentially more important during COVID. And, and so I'd say number one is your reviews should really represent who you are. And so if, you know, we have a saying at Podium where we don't make bad companies look good. We make good, co we, we help good companies look good, right? We, we want to help companies that are providing great service, show that to the rest of the world. And, and so I think it just comes down to at the end of the day to, to providing great service and caring about customers. And that's gonna be the top way to get good reviews at the end of the day. It's not gonna take any software, it's not gonna take any special method, it's gonna say, it's gonna take you providing great service. And I think right now to, to what we were just talking about, if you can tell them what you're doing to protect them from coronavirus as you come and, and provide a service to them and do those types of things, they feel like you're going over the top to protect them and have their best interest in mind, then they're gonna be more inclined to give you a good review. So that's number one, just provide great service, go over the top, especially given the current circumstances. Um, number two, I'd say you have to ask them. You know, we're just not, as consumers, we're not motivated to go take the effort, go track down the Facebook page or the Google My Business page or Home Advisor or whatever page you, you prefer. We're just not inclined to go find that and, and go figure out how to leave your review. So you need to ask them. And typically, if you ask them, they're going to be willing to do it. And then if you do that through a, a way that's convenient, whether you're face to face and, and obviously six feet apart, but you ask them or you shoot them a, an email or a text message, you ask them on the phone, whatever, again, is going to be a convenient experience and comfortable for them. 
that's going to be a great way to do it. Um, you know, at Podium, we do a lot through text message and we always recommend that because it gets in front of customers really easily. But, but by no means is that the only way. And, and again, asking is what's most important. If you ask, then, then they can do it. Um, and honestly, the last piece I'd say is just communicate, communicate, communicate. Again, it comes down to your service. The more you communicate with your customers and the better you are at that communication, even if they have a bad experience, if you're in good communication with them, you're gonna catch that bad experience before they go post a negative review. And then you can go back and you can solve whatever's wrong. If they're unhappy with the service you provided, someone was late, there's a delay in, in you know, something being delivered, whatever it may be, they're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to help solve that. And, and again, as you communicate back and forth, you're gonna be able to get those good reviews. So I think you just have to provide that great service, ask them, and then just be, make sure you're communicating through all steps of, of your relationship with the customer. Yeah, that last, that last thing that you mentioned is super important because a lot of people have this negative connotation like, oh, I can never reach my contractor or there's, they never call me back or I don't even know what's going on. And so um, in a world where that's the norm or that's the expectation, it's so much easier to rise above that. And it's a great way to just differentiate and just set yourself apart um, because obviously turning into you know, the ostrich at, at the end of the job and putting your head in the sand and, and trying to hope that it goes away, you know, ultimately that'll, that'll hurt you a lot more than just being super easily accessible in a way that's most convenient for the customer, which often is what you mentioned, which is, you know, via text. Um, it isn't just like, um, you know, just a cold email. Um, text, I mean, if I look at my phone right now, you know, the amount of unread texts, okay, is one and unread emails is like, you know, 17,000. So um, you're definitely gonna get through a lot quicker via text. So that's a really- Yeah, you wanna get a hold of Roland, you text him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But no, I, I think that's a, a great point because that's the number one thing we hear from the home services pros that we work with. I'm sure it's similar for house call and, and all of you, you know, tuning in is that the number one complaint cu customers usually have is that they, they felt like there was a miscommunication in the process and almost every issue can be traced back to communication. And, and I think if you can communicate well, then customers are going to be so, so much more willing to give you a positive review and just feel good about your business. And, and not to mention direct referrals. And, and we all, we know that referrals are so powerful. Um, it's not something that Podium specializes in, but I, I know how important it is for home services business. And so you got to make sure that you're, you're doing, I, I was hiring an excavator for some work recently, and I can't tell you how frustrating it was with the, you know, the seven people I reached out to and six of them I could hardly get a hold of. And the one who got my business was the one who was texting me back right away. And we had great conversations. He came over the next day, gave me a bid. And throughout the entire process, when there's been delays or anything else, he's just texted me, let me know what's going on. So that communication just is crucial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Wade, you kind of already answered this already. Um, the best way to ask for a review, and I was going to ask you, um, has anything changed about this during the COVID outbreak? And you had mentioned, like, when you're asking face-to-face, -face, standing six feet apart, but has anything changed about asking for a review over text, maybe appealing to, like, what's going on in the world right now? Or should our pros stay away from mentioning COVID when they're asking for reviews? You know, I, I think it's okay. I think at the end of the day, you're just asking the customer to be real with you. And, and say, hey, tell us what your experience has been like. And if you, if you want to mention like what we've been able to do to help ease your mind during COVID, that's super helpful. It's, it's okay to ask them for a favor. Um, if you've provided great service, again, then they should be willing to do it. And, and it's just part of that. Most people are good people and they're willing to, to pat you on the back and say thanks, right? And so I think during COVID, certainly um, in general, there's just less face-to-face -face interaction with people. And so if you're a, an external, like a, you know, you, you focus on the exterior of someone's home, you may not even see them at all when you're there providing a service. If you're going inside, obviously they got to let you in, but no one's wanting to sit around and, and, and chit chat, right? And so probably out of respect for a customer, when you're in their home, you probably don't want to take the extra time and say, hey, would you mind taking time to leave me a review? Here's how you do it. And you're trying to show them how to do it and whatever else. That's just too much right now. And so I'd say it has changed a little bit. But I still say the same principles apply. If you can get it to them, get them an invitation in a way that's really convenient for them and it makes it easy for them, and that's going to be your best way to, to convert that customer who's willing to review into a review left on your preferred site. And so, um, again, if they prefer email or text or they want you to call them later and talk about it, whatever it may be. But yeah, face to face. Typically at Podium, we recommend highly that, that a pro would talk to a customer face to face and say, hey, job's completed you think you could leave us a review and as, as they have that interaction, then there's usually really good reception. But in this circumstance, it's probably best to do it through another means, something, you know, electronic, however you can do it just to, to get out of their hair and make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, obviously, um, when you're when you set expectations with with the homeowner, um, it's going to be much easier to get a higher conversion. So something that I've seen a lot of pros do well, um, because um, you know House Call Pro and Podium do talk together, is hey, uh, we just finished the job. Just so you know, you're going to be getting a text. I, I use a service just to help send a link out that makes it easier for you to leave me that review. Would you please leave me that review? Um, and so you set the expectation. Hey, you're going to get something. I'm asking you yeah. to do something. And um, even you know, it reminds me of the. Um, the, the interview last night where, you know, I told Mark Cuban, you, know, you don't, you don't get what you don't ask for. Mm -hmm. And so um, this applies to so many things in life. Um, not just, not just that. So this is a, a really good way. Now, obviously there's kind of like, um, almost like a, like a hidden gem um, that, that our customers have and, and the hidden gem, the hidden trick uh, is you have a big customer database in all the years prior to COVID you've built up that customer base, you've done a lot of great services. Um, what do you think is the best way to start, you know, attacking that list of previous customers to start asking them for reviews? Because it doesn't just have to be, you know, now that job counts are a little down, you know, it doesn't have to be the do jobs you're doing even right now. It could also be the previous. So how, how would you advise, you know, one of our pros to think about um, going after those customers? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a couple factors here. I think first and foremost, you want to be thoughtful, really thoughtful about how you approach this. The last thing you want to do is, is make them feel like they're getting spammed. Mm -hmm. And, and so you need to make sure that it's relevant and, and you're, you're just thoughtful about how you ask them. Um, again, when you know, you've had a good uh, experience, you've provided a good customer experience. I think you, it's okay to go back. And even if it's been six months or 12 months or however long since you last interacted with that customer, I think it's still okay to reach out. But as you do so, uh, help them understand why you're reaching out now. And, mm -hmm. and, and something like, look, you know, Roland, we recognize that reviews are even more important right now, given the current conditions. And so we're reaching back out to some of our, our top customers that we've had some great experiences with and just asking them if they wouldn't mind leaving us a review and letting, letting everyone else know how, the, how your experience was with us. Is that something you'd be willing to do? Just very not pushy. I think people are understanding about why you're reaching out. And, and it's, again, it's, it's, a, it's a light ask. Yes, there's been more time. And, and maybe even you, you reference like, look, I know it's been six months since we talked to you. Um, how's, how's everything gone on that roof replaced or on your furnace we fixed or whatever it may be. Um, if you can reference the job or whatever it may be, it just helps contextualize it and bring it back to them. Because the other thing you're going to run into with customers that are pretty old is that, that they're not going to remember exactly what you did for them or whatever, right? Especially if it's a smaller service. If they replace, you know, you replace their roof for something big, then maybe they're, they're gonna recognize that right off. But otherwise they may not even remember exactly what you were doing for them and, and what their experience was like. So call to memory what, what they did, uh, you know, be honest about why you're reaching out and, and just say, hey, can you do me a favor? We had a good experience with you. We wanna hear if you had a good experience with us. Mm -hmm. And something like that, that we we've also been talking about to Roland and also with Mel over the last six weeks is just like calling your customers to check in on them. That is a totally natural way to lead into this. Um, if you're not asking if they have any work that needs to be done around the house, maybe they're even going to be the ones to offer up and say like, Hey, you know, maybe I haven't left a review for you. You can ease into this stuff. Um, yeah. So I think that's yeah, a really good point. Yeah, as they start to interact with you, then it, it just opens you up to potentially get more business out of them, right? And that's the great thing. You, again, communication, right? They want someone who's going to communicate with them. And so if you're asking them for something, they may say, hey, actually, I remember now I, was, I, I actually have another need. Can you help me out with this job? And, and, and you can actually get business from that as well. Totally. So um, this goes into our, our next question for Wade, but I want to ask everyone who's watching, who has ever gotten a review? Um, and it's a good review and they gave you five stars, but it just said great service or did a good job or like one, one sentence or a few words. Who's ever gotten a review like that? It, that just isn't detailed. It's kind of just like a filler review. Um, put that in, in the chat if you've ever gotten reviews like that. Cool. Like so a, thanks. <laughs> yeah, like a yeah. thank great. you for coming over. Good job. Like, like or it's just blank. It's just stars and nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool. So we said definitely from uh, Keelan. Michelle says, yep. Um, Shay says, I have. Robert Blair says, all the time. Michael says, all the time. Okay. So it looks like a theme. Um, and also from the customer side, I hate reading those. I'm like, this is not helpful to me as like a consumer trying to figure out if I want to, if I want to use this service. So Wade, can you please give our audience now um, your advice on how to get customers to write a detailed review, just not, not just great service? Yeah. 
this is a really good topic because I think there's a few factors. Number one, a review with stars is, is fine. Uh, if, if it doesn't have any comments or very little comments, um, it helps you, but not as much as, as a rich a review with rich content. Mm -hmm. And think about uh, other consumers. If everything you have is just a five star, but no comments, it almost feels spammy, <laughs> right? And, and so you want to get your, your, your customers to leave you some, some comments, even if it's just a sentence or two. And so I think it comes down to how you ask, right? We talked about the important thing is to ask, but the next level is to, to think about how you ask. Mm -hmm. And most people just say, hey, would you, would you leave us a review? right? Or would you, would you go to Google and leave us a review? Would you go to uh, you know, Facebook or Home Advisor, whatever it may be? And instead, maybe think about something like, um, would, you, would you please give us some feedback about the timeliness and quality of our work by leaving us a review on Google, right? And so when you, when you mention specific topics that you're looking for, then they're much more likely to talk about those topics in their review. And, and so, hey, don't, don't just give us five stars. Tell us why you gave us five stars, right? And you can even say it that way. Hey, would you give us a, a review? And, and we'd love it if you tell us why you, you give us whatever rating you give us, right? What, what led to that? Was it a great experience with the technician? Was it, you know, how we had masks and gloves on, right? Like, what is it that made the experience great? And again, especially during COVID, that's a great thing to do is to say, hey, we know this is a, a crucial time for consumers to really vet out who they're working with. Would you mind leaving us a review on, on Facebook? And in your review, if you don't mind mentioning like how you felt about how we handled COVID and, and helped protect you, that would just be really helpful for us, right? And again, it's not any bigger of an ask. It's just giving a little more detail as to what you're asking for. Yeah, and I'd say like obviously um, that gives an additional set of information to other things too. Um, not just humans are reading these reviews. So obviously as Google is thinking about, hey, who do I surface when someone types in septic tank replacement? Pacific Beach, you know, or these types of things. Um, try to also ask your, ask your question, hey, would you mind um, telling the people just in the review, like what, what we came out and did for you? Because um, as those yep. keywords start searching up, um, obviously search engines are becoming smarter and smarter. Uh, obviously probably Google a little smarter than some of the other ones, but they're looking at what is in those reviews because when you take a look at a lot of the reviews on the web, the things that you're seeing are mostly like 4.5 stars and up. You know, there's very few ones that you see with very low. Maybe they're a new business. Um, but then how would you imagine um, you know, a, a robot determining, you know, which, which one to show above another. Um, and obviously those keywords um, matter. Um, I've also seen a lot of um, companies um, ask for homeowners to leave the name of the technician uh, that came out to, to go do it. Um, you know, obviously you can track with software which technician it was that went out and do it if you have like a CRM and, and like a review gen in place. Um, but also if you have them reference that in the review, that's really great. That's really unique. It gives that small hometown feel. You know, nobody knows who works at Roto Rooter. <laughs> um, but but someone knows Bob from Bob's Plumbing, you know, and so if they keep seeing Bob, 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 you're gonna draw people that are like, oh yeah, I wanna know Bob. I want Bob to be my look, look like any man. So um, have them say your technician's name, have them say what you know, what, what did you go do for them? And then also, if you can get them to say, you know, hey, would you mind just mentioning your neighborhood? You know, um, neighborhood level, local level um, relevancy is going to help you guys out there um, as, as you guys are trying to set yourself apart in the areas you guys want to service. Yeah. And the, the main thing, so, so there's been a ton of research around what goes into these algorithms for Google and other search engines to, to return results. And especially in local search, People always wonder, well, what's what's what are the factors that are going into that? Like, if I search for, for you know, AC repair in San Diego because it's a beautiful day and my AC broke, what am I? How is it going to rank that? And all the research shows that the main factors are uh, obviously the star rating matters. Proximity is number one. Proximity to search is always number one. So how close they are to you and where your Google My Business listing is in, in, on Google, for example, that's going to be the most important factor. But beyond that, reviews are like six of the top 10 items. It, the star rating, the number of reviews you have. And then another thing that's really important is a recency and frequency of reviews. So you wanna be consistent over time. And, and last but not least, what we're talking about is that, that content. If you have rich content and the replies that go along with that, this is, that also adds to the rich content. It's not just what the consumer leaves you in the review, but how you go in and respond. So Google tracks all of those factors and they will help, they'll, they'll rank you higher when you have that rich content, you have those replies, 
And that's true for the other search engines as well. So wherever people are searching, it's only going to be a benefit if they leave you more robust reviews, you, you have your customers leave more details there and you're replying to those reviews. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful. Um, so obviously there's a lot of places you can get reviews. Um, you know, Google being just one of them. Uh, you mentioned Home Advisor, you mentioned Facebook, you mentioned um, Yelp. Um, up in Canada, you, have, you know, you have Home Stars. Um, what, what do you think should be the strategy in terms of uh, where you should really focus on getting reviews? And then, um, you know, how do you determine, you know, do you focus all your energy on one and get them up to a certain level? Or do you kind of sprinkle them across all? Like, what are your views on that? Because there's a lot of platforms out there. Yeah. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there's a ton of platforms. And, and honestly, you can hear a lot of different strategies uh, on what's best. And it probably depends on who's telling you, right? You know, is, is, as much as I want to like say that there's a, a simple answer, it, it is complex because every business is different. Some pros, Home Advisor is providing tons of leads and, and they want to make sure that their profile on Home Advisor is just top notch and they want to have as many reviews as possible so they can just stand out from, from everyone else there. Other, other pros may be like, I don't even use Home Advisor and my leads come through X, Y, and Z platform, right? So it, I would say, look at where your business is coming from first and foremost. Uh, with that being said, one thing to, to recognize is that most searches start on Google and, and they may end up on other sites, but Google's also indexing other sites. Google indexes right. Facebook, they index how, uh, Home Advisor, they, they index all kinds of review sites, right? So getting reviews on any site will be helpful reviews on Google help you the most on Google, right? And so again, as you kind of start to track your web track, if you, if you don't have analytics set up on your website to see where your traffic is coming from, you need to do that because that's gonna tell you where your leads are coming from and that's where you need to prioritize reviews. So I'd say for most of the home service pros that Podium works with, we're, we're usually recommending Google and that's just because as a, as a general consumer, that's where most searches are starting when they start their research and you wanna show up well there. You may hate Google, but the, the stats are, are, are very compelling as to why you need to have a good reputation on Google. Beyond that, I'd say it's completely up to the business. Facebook is certainly a, a strong candidate because there is a ton going on on Facebook. They're always trying to get more engagement with users. They have a lot of recommendation features on Facebook. So when someone asks in their community neighborhood group, hey, who should I use to pour some concrete? Then as people start listing your business in there, it's going to show you, it's going to show what your your, your, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down is on whether you're recommended or not on Facebook now that they've gone away from stars. So yep. it's just good to know where your business is being talked about and make sure you're prioritizing that. I'd say what we see the most of from a, just a general data standpoint, I'd say probably 90% of our home services business have Google as the primary option. And then usually it's, it's Facebook home advisor, you know, you always get some thumbtack and, and, you know, home stars, like you mentioned up in Canada and other places, but but really Google and Facebook are the lion's share of, of where people are directing that traffic. Um, yep. And, and to, to the rest of your question, you should try to spread it out. Like there may be businesses that have 500 reviews on Google and 12 on Facebook. And, and honestly, you're just doing yourself a disservice because you're not balancing that out. And so I would just recommend always balancing that out. Um, prioritize where you're getting the most leads and traffic from, but then also balance that out to some of the other sites because people are seeing you on those sites as well. Yeah, never put all your eggs in one basket. We've learned that, yeah. if anything, from, <laughs> from the situation we're all in right now. <laughs> yep. Um, awesome. So those are all of our questions for Wade. Now we're going to go to your questions. There is a bunch here in the Q&A, and then, Roland, maybe you can choose some from Facebook if we have any. Um, we're probably going to go through, like, three to five on here, depending on the time. Um, but our first one has five upvotes. What should pros do to get good reviews and referrals on Nextdoor? It's a really good question. Yeah, we've seen an uptake there, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's giving people a way to get there. Um, you know, Nextdoor as a platform is, is getting a lot of consumers in there. And so if that's a source you've seen a lot of traffic coming from, you want to prioritize that. I think the trick is it's not as simple for people to go, uh, as it is, say, to Google and leave a review. So I think it's, it's all about making it easy get as deep a link as you can to where you can go and really any any platform if you're working with a, a third party like podium or someone else to get reviews then you should be able to take that link pop it in there and send that out and and whether again where whether it's via email or or text you should be able to send that to your customers directly that's pr 
probably going to be your best bet because if you're just talking to a consumer, unless they're just really heavy users on Nextdoor, for them to go create a Nextdoor account, log in, go leave that review, it's going to be really, really difficult. So if you're just trying to drive organic reviews to Nextdoor, it's going to be tough unless you give them that link and get as deep into where they need to go as possible with really easy instructions. And so, um, you know, you can take that link and send it out manually, or you can use a platform like Podium or someone else to, to help send that out. But it's just about that simplicity and getting it right in front of them. Yeah, we've seen a massive uptick in traffic just on, on, on Nextdoor, more, more than two and a half Xing. Obviously, with everything that's going on with coronavirus, everything's becoming very local, very neighborhood based and very neighbor watched. Um, yep. So that's been a, a huge source of inbound referrals to, to our pros recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, and then we, we, this was our first topic in the beginning, but just to go over it um, briefly one more time. So uh, hello, are Google reviews not going through as of right now because I have customers sending me screenshots of reviews they've written. I don't see it on my end. Can you give us a quick little summary? Yeah, so just to hit on that again, you know, what's happened is Google paused uh, the reviews being posted. They were still being collected and they paused you as a pro being able to respond to those reviews. Uh, and that was all just based on prioritization of, of resources for COVID and everything else they had to do uh, to also protect businesses from getting negative reviews associated with COVID related issues. That has started to lift a little bit. Google is systematically starting to now release those reviews. So they are hitting uh, Google My Business pages and they've enabled you to start going in and responding to reviews again. So that should enable you to start seeing those come through and they have saved all those reviews. Nothing's been lost. They haven't gone in the garbage can. Those reviews will start to post as well as new reviews that are currently being left will be posted as well. Uh, if you're not seeing it yet for your business, hang tight. Uh, I know they are kind of slowly revamping to, to get everything open back up, uh, yeah. but they have assured us that that should be happening in the next couple of weeks. Cool. All right. So here's the one that I hear all the time. It's not in the official Q&A box, but, um, but I saw it pop up in the Facebook chat. Um, if someone leaves you a re negative review and it's either a disgruntled employee, maybe a, maybe a, a competitive business, or just that crazy cat lady who you just can't seem to please, what is the easiest way to go about removing that review? Because it's really pulling down my average. I, I yeah. had to come back on to defend crazy cat ladies. It's a scary <laughs> We won't hold it against you. <laughs> no, so, so there's a few things. I mean, if it's a consumer who did business with you and, and they left you a negative review, you're probably not going to get rid of that review. That, that's the honest truth. Um, if, if something just went wrong in the job, you're going to have some of those. And I think the key with that comes back to what we talked about earlier with the consistency of getting reviews, because that should be an outlier for your business. You're providing a good service. A, a bad review should be an outlier. And so you don't need to worry about the one unhappy customer who just can't make happy. We've all had them. We'll still have them again. Uh, regardless of COVID or anything else, you're going to have an unhappy customer here and there, and they're going to leave you a negative review. So you just want to make sure you're getting those positive reviews, which goes back to everything else we talked about tonight. Now, when it comes to like a disgruntled employee or maybe a competitor, every platform is a little bit different, but almost all platforms, Google and, and Facebook and Yelp and everybody has a way to contest a review. We can go through when you're logged into your admin account and you can go say, hey, this was not a legitimate review. This is not a customer. I've never done business with this person. Sometimes it may be easy if you can see who the person is. If you say, this was a, a disgruntled employee, I can prove that they used to work for me. I had to fire them, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. If it's a competitor and they're using a fake name, that may be a little bit harder to prove. And so, uh, you know, these platforms all kind of take a different approach to how they'll handle that. And, and unfortunately, in some cases, there's nothing you can do. But I would always at least submit that, especially if you know that it's someone that, that was dishonest or if you can look in your database of, of all your customers and say, I've never done business with a Roland Lightenberg. Who is this person, right? Um, then, then you can go have that conversation. And I've seen Google and, and, and all the platforms really uh, remove reviews from people that were, were either you know, spamming you or, or just trying to get a competitive leg up or whatever it may be. Uh, I've seen them remove those reviews, but it's not every case. I would say you probably have like a 30 to 40% chance of getting it done if you have a strong case. Um, it's not 100%. And so, again, it's just really important to make sure you're getting those pause reviews because if you just leave it to organic, whatever's going to happen, whether it's a legitimate review or not, you're going to get those negative reviews popping in. It's going to bring down your average. So if you have 10 reviews and you get two negative ones, that really hurts you. 
if you have 150 reviews, you get two negative reviews, it's not really gonna impact you very much. Yep. So, wait, I, I've got a question from, from Alice West. She and I were chatting in the chat earlier, so I'm looking out for Alice and her question. So she wants to know how far back should you go to thank people who already left a review? Mm. You know, I don't know. There's like a super strong limit. I'd say if you have the time, keep going back. I think it's more, most important for, for your most recent reviews, right? And, and if you can get through those and then you go back a month, two months, six months, eight months, whatever it may be, it's not going to hurt you, right? So my recommendation is start from today and move backwards. And if you have time, go back as far as you can. If not, then to at least get to the most recent. And then, and then once you've gotten the most recent, say the last couple of months, then go back to your old negative reviews and respond to those. Because what's going to happen is, I'm sure we've all done this on Amazon or anywhere else that we're looking at reviews. And, and we want to know what, what went wrong. We want to know what the negative reviews say. And so those always get pulled up more frequently than people just going back and I want to read all of your positive reviews. So if they see 10 positive reviews left this week, that's great. Then they're going to go say, okay, what are the one stars? And you want to make sure you've responded to all those in a really professional way. Uh, and it, like Alexa mentioned, they have a guide to help you. You can get that taken care of, but respond to those negative reviews as far back as you can. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great advice. Then, um, I have a last question here, and I guess it's it's addressed to all three of you. So um, how do you, well, for Roland and Wade, how do we incentivize employees to ask for a review? And I think, Mel, where you can come in is employee behavior and how to encourage employees. So if you guys can speak on that for our last question. Yeah, I mean, sure. I, I have some thoughts on employee behavior. I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, you know, recognizing the behavior you want to see repeated. So really shouting from the rooftops every time one of your techs gets a review, you know, to the rest of your folks and just like really praising the positive. So it's, you know, recognize what you want to see repeated. Um, so I'm more in the positive than on the, the mandatory um you know, stick. I'm more on just creating like a positive culture of encouragement and really, you know, hyping that up and, you know, texting the entire team and really celebrating and, you know, sending that person something unexpected as opposed to a, hey, this is mandatory. If you don't do it, you're going to get in trouble. Sort of, you, you catch more, what is it? You catch more flies with honey. <laughs> um, so, it should be part of your best practice. It should be part of your process flow. I mean, it should be like, hey, this is just an expectation. This is what we do. But I just love really shouting it out when some, when you've seen someone do it, maybe you're on a call with them um, and you watch them do it and then recognizing them in front of others. So praising in public um, and just recognizing the behavior you'd like to see more of. And then send them something unexpected. Send them something to their house if they got a great review. You know, send them something that they're going to you know, they're going to take a, a, a selfie with, you know, send them, send them a fruit basket or bottle of wine or mm -hmm. six pack or, or, or something. Wine. Bottle <laughs> um, of wine, six pack. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I was going to say, Mel, I think, I think you're spot on. I think it's got to be part of your culture. And if it's not part of your culture of who you are as a business, then your employees aren't going to buy into it. So if you're just trying to force it, even if you're going to dangle a gift card, you know, hey, whoever gets the most reviews this month is going to get a $50 Amazon gift card. Does that do more than praising them every time they get a five-star review? I, I would, I'd say it doesn't. I think the five-star review and praising them and, and really making a big deal of it and, and give everyone who gets, a, you know, don't make it that only the person who wins because there might be someone who maybe works part-time or doesn't get as many jobs or doesn't see as many customers as someone else. And so they're never going to get the most reviews. But if it's part of your culture and they buy into providing a five-star experience, but also being praised when they do that, then you're going to build that in, in I guess the, the incentive is internalized. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do. The gifts help, but it's all about them feeling great about where they work and what they're doing and, and feeling like they're appreciated. And I think that's huge. And so as much as you can, you can praise them. Uh, there's a lot of businesses that we, we preach like, when you go to a customer, say, hey, it's our goal to give you a five-star experience today. We want to do everything we can. So if I'm not giving you a five-star experience, will you let me know? And, and then at the end, they say, hey, did I give you a five-star experience? And the customer says, absolutely, great. Will you tell us about it, right? That's part of how you ask for the review. But then when you get back in the office and that they left that five-star review, then all of a sudden your boss is saying, hey, great job giving a five-star experience. You are awesome. Thank you so much. And then maybe in a week, they get a, a, a gift in the mail, right? Like that's, you're just going to, really breed great behavior when you are 
or, or just make it part of your culture. Yeah, and I love I love the unexpected rewards, right? If I'm expecting it, and then I'm asking, okay, well, when is my fifty dollars gift card coming? It's I mean, it's not bad to to recognize with something that is stated and expected, but the unexpected means so much more. I mean, what does it mean when you go to the door and you get something that you didn't expect? What does it mean when you go to the mailbox and you got a handwritten card from your boss that you just saw that day? You know, when you went and picked up your truck from six feet away, yeah. like, why is there something in the mail from them and it's a handwritten thank you card? And you know. Yeah with and, the very low cost that you just completely were not expecting. And maybe you've got the $50 gift card or whatever your, your company you know, policy is, but it's the unexpected that they remember that means more. Um, and, and switch it up, challenge yourself, be creative, be different. Just recognize, 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 and praise, praise, praise. You, you cannot do too much of it. Well, I like the comment from uh, Michelle that says that they have a special time in their meetings to recognize people have gotten reviews. And I think if you were just to, like pick three every, you know, if it's a weekly meeting, pick three people that got reviews that mention them specifically and read those out loud and then praise them and have everyone cheer for them. Just make it fun. Right. And, and again, setting that time aside is going to make them feel like a rock star and you're, it's going to help your employer retention. Let's be honest. So um, it's in your best interest to really praise those people that are helping you get those great reviews. Absolutely. Yep. Public recognition. Public. Yep. And then Roland, do you have anything on that, anything creative from your mind on incentivizing employees to get reviews? Yeah, I would just say in, in, in general, um, everything that um, Mel said and, and Wade said is, is absolutely true. I mean, obviously one thing that motivates everybody is just competitions. And when you're thinking about it, think beyond just a $50 gift card, think about an experience, things that they won't forget. So it kind of goes along with what Mel was saying about something unexpected. Um, things where people are like, wow, why are you going on this trip? Oh yeah, I got the, I got a really great review and you know what? Um, my employer is sending me to Disney World and my family and things like that. Um, those go so much further. Um, I know Don Snyder here was watching earlier. Um, he's done, he's done that and um, actually sent um, his employees entire family to Disney World and because awesome. they, they end up getting the most amount of reviews. And so um, that just helped establish as something really important. And then more than anything, you know, it, it might not have been something that if they had $50 worth of, you know, I don't know, like a stack of 20 gift cards or whatever that would have cost to send them. Um, you know, the, the costs aren't that far off if you pay them $50 for each review. Um, so think about, you know, creative out of the box things, things that surprise them um, and experiences and not just things, because um, they'll remember that for a long time to come. And that helps really ingrain that into culture. And another good idea is, um, you know, badges, stickers, like things that don't have high value, but you badges. can get through doing those things. I mean, we've seen people fall over to get, you know, a, a super pro sticker that, you know, that, and it's like, it's a sticker, but it means so much more. So little, little stars they can put on the back of their, their truck for yeah. everyone they get, um, you know, something that can't be bought can only be earned. Um, some companies have name tags and then they can, you know, get the silver star and then it upgrades to the gold star. And then, you know, maybe each one also has some sort of monetary reward attached, but I've seen people fall over, you know, competing to get a plastic trophy that costs me $15 yeah. um, and not pay much attention with a contest that just had $50 cash. So, yep. Don't underestimate the power of a, of a token. Totally. I have some great ideas here. We give restaurant gift cards quarterly, bought tools for them. Last week of the year off paid vacation, sending to dinner. Um, these are all great ideas. And as always, if you want to run those ideas past us, make sure you're putting them in the coronavirus Facebook group. So I linked it here. I'll link it again. If you guys aren't a part of this and Wade, feel free to join if you are interested I'm, in seeing. I'm in there. Oh, awesome. <laughs> and, then, and then the last thing I linked here too, that will be really helpful for helpful to you guys. Um, if you were to read one thing, I would read this, how to respond to negative reviews. It's really, really good. We took examples from pros in the house called pro group who just like got it down and have incredible reviews and know how to respond. So um, other than that, thank you for joining us tonight, Wade. Really, we appreciate it. Um, and everyone here who's still with us, thank you for joining us. We will see you tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time for our last evening update of the week. We are having Brooks and Janelle on and also Victor Rancor. Um, he is awesome at selling. That is their whole thing, Selling 101. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. We'll post a little promo tomorrow. But again, Wade... Mel, Roland, thank you, everyone. We'll see Thanks, you. Thanks, Wade. Appreciate it. Thanks, see you guys. Everybody, stay healthy.